YouTube here right now. Live, live, live. Good morning. Welcome to the YouTube channel for Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio on a windy, downright chilly Saturday morning, March 14th. Burr. The old bunkhouse is a bit on the chilly side this morning. So there you go. Let me know if you have some audio there. I see one person logged on. Make sure it's coming through all right. We'll be uh, talking to a sanctuary counties and also red flag laws again, as we didn't have enough time. Morning, Mike. Good to have you on YouTube as well as Mumble. So, uh, yeah, uh, we didn't have enough time. Well, it was about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, somewhere in there. So we're going to be talking about it again and go through it one more time. In fact, I had... Uh, a legislator out of South Dakota messaged me after the first one. I'll have to look that back up here. And uh, see if uh, they're listening again today down in Pier. This guy. There it is. Born Westmeister, I believe. There it is. So there you go. Other than that, we have uh, probably about right around 10, 12, 13, 14, 14 minutes before the actual show starts on the radio side of things. Just getting hooked up here for the radio stations to do us audio check and all that great stuff. So there you go. <clears throat> Good morning, Karen. How's things over in Mobridge this morning here? Is the water open on, on the Wahi? Is it running under the bridge? Let me know. What's happening in Mobridge, please, as I set my phone system up. There, set up. Man, it's chilly out this morning. Got my cows moved on to the winter pasture yesterday, thanks to uh, John Polcheski, Joe Miller, Jerry Lamborn, and Gene 1.0. We got them moved out. We got sorted. We got my registered stuff here in the back behind the house. We got everything else out in the calving pasture. Let the calving commence. It's not today or tomorrow. Man, oh man. Just a nasty wind. Mm. Coronavirus mixture right here. Anti-coronavirus. It's a pretty hard uh, recipe. It's uh, vitamin C. Not that I care about the coronavirus. I just drink vitamin C in the morning. I've been doing that for a while. Trying to stay on the uh, better side of not getting sick so I can uh, get to more auctions and do more auctioneering. I don't know what have got going on here. Get to check on my suppressor today. Better check his real name. I don't even know Cord's full name. Have to check that out here. See if I can spell it. There it is. Hey, I spelled it correct. Nice. How about that? Cerberus Security. Oh, man. Come on. About. Andrew Cordenway. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to pronounce that correctly. <clears throat> we just call him Cord. Let's see. Well, other than that, what's else up in here? Wait for KGFX here. Sign in. Oh, 
Oh, excuse me. Where's my mouse? There it is. Write up a few things here since nobody's awake yet this morning and they're just waiting online. Oh, I got a few things. Uh, last Saturday, the DK Angus sale went awesome. Sitting bowl auction. Wheel is done. That was done. All right, coming up, we have, I don't know, let's do it in order. Had the Shree for sale on Thursday. That went good. Went really good. So what do I got here? I have White's Lee joint production sale coming up March 21st. I won't be there because I'll be at the fur auction in Bismarck as their auctioneer on March 21st. That's next weekend already. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, March 21st, uh, Burley County 4-H Center is what they call it out at the fairgrounds. And we will be uh, starting the fur auction 1 o'clock Central Time, Bismarck. Then the Medicine Rocks Angus Ranch Bull Sale is April 24th. Uh, that'll be at Bowman Auction Market in Bowman. I'll be that way as well. Maybe hopefully get the bull. So there are a few things going on. Morning, Chuck. Good to see you guys over there. Down yonder. Pure South Dakota. Holy moly. I don't think my little space heater under the desk here is doing much. Is it on? It's on. It's on. I don't feel like it. See what the forecast is, uh, what we have here. That would be why. Wind chill feels like three, 20 degrees with uh, a lot of wind. What is the wind right now? East at 22, gusting up to 50 miles an hour. Yay. Yay, that'll be fun. Feeding this morning. There you go. But the good part about it, the allergy risk is really low. And it says right here on my phone. Can you see that? Come on. Running. I'll just read it to you. No good running weather this morning. There you go. So I'm guess I'm going to have to stop not uh, not plan my run for today. Yeah. Not going to get much better the whole day today. Looks like a chance of precipitation this afternoon, evening. One to two inches is what we're expected to get. One to two inches. But that can change. <clears throat> Very quickly it can change here. So. Well, other than that here, what is... Uh, what else can I talk about? Oh, I don't have nothing written down. Oh, I'll just fly by the seat of my pants. How about that? Don't need no stinking intro. What's up with the toilet paper craze? I don't get this. I even stopped at a grocery market and asked, and they tried to defend it. <laughs> they're, they're saying... Well, they're worried about all the toilet paper that's made in China. That's why they're buying toilet paper. And I looked at the uh, person in front of me who had like seven or eight big round or square bales full of uh, toilet paper. And it was all made in China. So that kind of blew that right out of the water for that guy. North Dakota, South Dakota, closing schools down. No sports. No national, no regional sports, no college sports, no professional sports. Oh, Montana too, sorry. Montana listeners over there. Yeah. Schools closed, everything's closed up. Over how many cases? I think four, four or five in South Dakota, four or five in North Dakota, I think four or five in Montana. But yet, if they have the flu or mono, <laughs> we keep school going. Yeah, we're not worried about that. We're not worried about everybody getting the flu or mono. 
I don't get it. You can chime in any time. So we do have about eight minutes. So I'll just keep babbling until we do it. Hmm. <sighs> Commercial residential. All right. I wonder when my suppressor is going to be here. Mike Wagner, toilet paper. Who gives a crap? <laughs> Fortunately, in the small town, of, let's see, I was in Bowman. We didn't have a crazies. But I hear in Dickinson, Walmart, they have bare shelves. I don't know if that's true. I never go into Walmart. Out of curiosity, how much is toilet paper on Amazon this morning? Look at there, it comes up as a fast search. Let's see. Jumbo. No, you don't want that. I'm trying to find a comparable. 16 family rolls. Sold out. Currently unavailable. Quilted Northern. Not available. These are paper towels. You can buy them for like uh, commercial buildings like the Oh, I don't know. The big ass rolls. Jumbo roll for forty dollars. Maybe that's what you need to do. Look at there. Amazon is not available for toilet paper. <laughs> I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Who would have thought? <laughs> Let's see what they have for hand sanitizer, just out of curiosity. Oh, that comes up really quick too. Uh, let's see. Unavailable. Six dollars. Oh, this one is uh went from six ninety nine to fifty five ninety nine. Interesting. Price gouging on hand sanitizer on Amazon. Beautiful. That stuff's easy to make. Ivermec is pretty cheap. Cydectin, a little bit more expensive, but you need a lot less if you're gonna go that route. Man. Oh, I bet my water tanks are froze up this morning. Where are we at? All right. I'm going to call my guests here and get them lined up here quick. So have fun listening to that. <clears throat> I think that's the right phone number. Move it in and Well, fine. Don't answer, Cord. What the hell, man? Let's go this route here. Recents. Well, we'll get the second person, I guess, here. Let's see if I can get him. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Morning. How are you doing? Good deal here. Let's see if Cord's going to answer the second time around here. I 
talked to him last night. He said he was ready to go, but it is windy and cold. Oh, cord's ready here. Let me get cord hooked up here. Stand by. You're uh, I'm gonna put you on hold here. <clears throat> hey. Well, why is it go? Why does it go that way? <laughs> Yellow this Scott. There you go, Cord. Is it you? Can you hear me? Good enough. All right. Sounds good here. I'm going to put you through here and get you all hooked up here on my other system. Stand by. Locked in there. All right. Cord, can you hear me? Yes. Dick, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Can you guys hear each other? Yes. Perfect. I can hear you, Cord. How you doing? Good. All righty. So uh, there we go. We have a couple minutes before we start here. We are live on YouTube, by the way, right now. So that's happening. All right. So we're already uh, doing that. So giddy up. So that's how things going. Cold We're as good. hell this morning at the ranch, man. I' not looking forward to going out and feeding, but I did get all my cows moved out of the winter pasture yesterday. So that's nice. Do you have uh, quads or horses? Do you ride? I uh, used quads yesterday. Just it's so slippery and uh, uh, just kind of dangerous right now. I lead them out. I shake a cake bucket, and they come running. Is what we did yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. Other than that, I have to make sure I got my stuff. And Andrew, uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Cordenway? Cordenoy. Cordenoy. All right. Damn it. Yep. I was close. Yeah, it's lots of Ukrainian. It's hard. That's why I just go by cord. I know. And it, I will too, but. That's Ukrainian, huh? Yep. All right, gentlemen, stand by. I'm going to turn you guys down, and I'm going to be ready here, making some adjustments for the show here. Uh, radio stations will do a time check here shortly, as we'll have 15 seconds, 15 seconds on mark. 15 seconds. And 10 Five seconds. Let's do this. Good morning and welcome to the Saturday edition of Dakota Prairie Outdoors. You can find me all across the upper Midwest on great radio stations, including KCJB up in Minot, KLTC in Dickinson, KFYR, Bismarck, KOLY in Moabridge and KGFX. In Pierre, South Dakota. Good to have you folks along here in the Dakota Territory, six states, and also two Canadian provinces. Good to have you along. If you want to join in today's conversation, oh, and by the way, you can also find me on YouTube live right now. If uh, not much to look at, but you can still listen to it there and come back later if you want to listen to some of the shows uh, after we're done like this, or maybe you miss it. You got to jump out and you're opening the gate to go feed some heifers or something like that and you miss portion of it you can always go back and watch it and listen to it on youtube my channel is dakota prairie outdoors radio please subscribe i'd appreciate that too uh, it's a cold day here at the bunkhouse but if you want to join in the 800 the toll free number is 888-9-DAKOTA that's 888-932-5682 again 888-932 nine three two five six eight two is the phone number if you want to join in and uh contact us and just talk a little bit th this morning uh my two guests this morning are no strangers to the program uh first up we have andrew cordenoy that's uh the president and owner according to your webpage here cord of cerberus security up in dickinson north dakota good morning how are you 
Doing good. And also, uh, we have uh, Edward Dick. That's also on a Dickinson area. With uh, he's trying to get that indoor range going. How how you doing there, Ed? Rather well and warm in her, in the house. Yes, and uh, perfectly. All right. And I'm not sure who this phone call is, but I'm going to answer it right away because that's what we do on my show. Good morning. You're on Dakota Prairie Outdoors. Who do we have? Morning. This is Luke Simons. Well, Representative Simons, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> I'm doing dandy. We got everybody with us this morning, so we got a three-way call going on here. So that means we have a representative, we have a, a person that owns Cerberus Security, and we have Edward Dick here with us who's uh, looking at putting a gun range. But I think we're all in agreement about a, a, a 2A Sanctuary <laughs> County. And uh, let's uh, we had a talk about this. Uh, Ed, you and I talked about this. Was that three weeks ago now? And uh, we ran out of time. And I said, well, let's donate a whole hour to it. And in fact, I had uh, a South Dakota representative. Luke, uh, I don't know how well you know those South Dakota guys down there. But I had one of those guys message me uh, after the program, too. And uh, hopefully he'll be able to call in if I can find his name again. Orrin Lesmeister, I believe is how you pronounce it from South Dakota listening down in the pier area as well. So hopefully they can call in and uh, join in on the conversation. So we'll start with you, Representative Simons. Uh, what's uh, what's the 2A Sanctuary County? What do you think this is uh, the right step to go here for? What is it, uh, Stark County? Yeah, it's for Stark County. And the reason I, I believe, you know, I'll just jump back by saying what happened in Virginia is actually probably a good thing that for our country. and. You know, we the people are the government, and our government sucks because we the people are not involved in our government. And it all comes down to local control. And so when you have, like what's happening in Virginia with the sheriff's office or with your counties, um, taking back control and saying, you know what, state government, you can do whatever you want to, but we're going to take care of this and that's the way it is. And that is actually a really good thing. And that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, in Stark County. Yeah. So court, I'm going to throw a question at you. How would the, you know, we, we've seen what's been happening in Virginia. And uh, if, if you can make Stark County a sanctuary two a sanctuary County, uh, how would this work with your local police officers court? What uh, do you think that they would join in on it, or do you think they would fight it? Uh, as far as what I've talked to with the local law enforcement here, they are kind of with the sheriff majority of the sheriff's departments over in Virginia, where they are against a uh, seizure of firearms, as far as red flags, uh, bills, or any other forms of that. They realize that the danger goes two ways on that. And that it is a constitutional right, not just uh, nationally constitutional, but also it's written into our state constitution. Sure. And uh, I'll go back over to Ed. I want to get you in a conversation as well. You know, uh, as a resident of uh, Stark County, I mean, uh, do you feel that this is going to be something that the rest of the county is going to uh, be behind? Or do you think there's going to be any opposition to that? Uh, I've talked to several people, like 30 or 40, that have said, yes, this is absolutely necessary and that we want to be very vocal in the preservation of our Second Amendment. The, on the West Coast and on the coast areas, they say sanctuary to not abide by our Constitution. We want right. to abide by our Second Amendment Constitution, and because without that, you're not going to have any of the rest of them, the First and the Fourth. And uh, like Cord mentioned, if you don't have the second, you're not going to have the Fourth Amendment because uh, that's what every every person of power that we elect, they take it back. And I think one thing happened just the other day. A, a politician said uh, to a worker, I don't work for you. And quite blatantly, yeah, uh, we, we elect them to bid, do our bidding. And they've taken that power, and now they are the leaders, or they're the. Uh, I can't say those other words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we don't want to have a sense. I don't have one of those censorship beep buttons here on my show, so we're just going to have to make sure. Uh, so what you're referring to is, 
uh, I believe it was Joe Biden, wasn't it? Uh, Representative Simons, uh, Joe Biden was uh, uh, talking to uh, union workers. Uh, yeah. yeah, the union worker said, "Hey, you work for me. Listen, to, listen to my question." And uh, Joe Biden said, "No, I didn't say those things." Well, he's been saying them a lot. Right. His, one of his quotes is, "Just get a shotgun and go out and shoot a couple of shots in the backyard." Really. He's a very uninformed about freedoms and responsibilities. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I, the true, uh, their, their true colors are shining through uh, more and more that I watch uh, some of the debates. There's no doubt about that. And that's what's scary about this. Uh, Representative Simons, they're after our guns, man. I mean, there's no denying it, is there? There is no denying it. And, you know, we have to remember that most of the field cannons that were purchased for the war of independence were purchased by normal people, regular people, not the military. Mm -hmm. And they were donated to our military. So when we say that they didn't have anything but a musket, that's a blatant lie. It's a blatant lie. Um, we as, as the militia of, of America, um, if you want to call us the militia or just whatever you want to call us, have the right to own military style guns, which Andrew would slap me alongside the face if he was <laughs> here right say. now. Because the the M you know our the AR fifteen is not a military style gun. Right. It is it is not one at all. And uh anyways yeah well i'll tell you what we're up against our break here guys so we're going to come back we'll uh continue this on the other side phone lines are open if you have questions comments concerns 888-932-5682 a good way to remember that is 888-9-DAKOTA is the number we'll be back with more coming up here k-o-l-y and Mobridge. we're here on kgfx and pier south dakota also kfyr and bismarck kcjb and minot and kltc in dickinson north dakota good to have you along across the six state network and a couple canadian provinces we'll be back right after these messages <laughs> From big loans to small personal loans, you can bring your dreams into focus with Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We make getting a business or a personal loan so simple, you'll want to work with us time and time again. With competitive rates, we offer personal, ag, farm, business and commercial loans, home loans and more. Stop into your local Dakota Community Bank and Trust for a quality hometown community banking experience we pride ourselves in. Equal housing lender and member FDIC. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. The DK Red Angus production sale is coming to town on Saturday, March 7th at 2 p.m. Central Time, Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Offering 57 purebred Red Angus bulls, 2 Red Angus Charlotte composite bulls, 5 Red Angus Simital composite bulls, 50 registered Red Angus yearling heifers, and 10 Red Angus commercial yearling heifers. With over 27 years in the Red Angus business and in the seed stock business for over 40 years, you can trust the Kiefler family. Join us on Saturday, March 7th, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Hi, this is Andy Murnock with Piper's Auctioneers inviting you to any one of these exceptional upcoming farm retirement equipment auctions featuring late model John Deere R-Series four-wheel drive and track tractors, a 2019 DB60 corn planter, and more in Starbuck, Minnesota on March 12th. Then on March 21st and March 26th, Piper's will be offering an entire fleet of late model Case IH sprayers, quad tracks, 9230 combines, a Clause 750 combine, Challenger Series tractors, trucks, trailers, and more near Richardson in New England, North Dakota. For online bidding and complete details, log on to Piper's. .com. Cattle producers, it's time for the Schrieffer Red Angus production sale. Thursday, March 12th, 1 p.m. Stockman's Livestock, Dickinson, North Dakota. Selling 25 two-year-old bulls and 35 commercial open heifers. Videos and information can be found online at SchrieferRedAngus.com. Docile dispositions and bulls anybody can use. Make sure you attend the Schrieffer Red Angus annual production sale. Thursday, March 12th, 1 p.m. at Stockman's Livestock, Dickinson, North Dakota. 
We want amazing innovations to drive progress for generations. We want jobs and careers for generations. We want American energy production that protects our land and the wildlife for generations. Today, the advanced technologies deployed by the North Dakota oil and gas producers are making that happen. And with the promise of emerging technologies, the energy of North Dakota has a very bright future for generations to come. This message is brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Council. To learn more, visit energyofnorthdakota.com. Hey folks, join me on Saturday. Saturday, March 7th, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota for the DK Red Angus production sale. 57 purebred Red Angus bulls offering sons of Rolling Deep 660, Thunder 637, Bieber, CL Atomic, and Top Notch 15, and many more. All bulls carcass ultrasounded and free delivery up to 500 miles. More information at DKRedAngus.net. Join the Kiefler family on Saturday, March 7th, 2 p.m. Central Time, Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Looking for a home loan? Dakota Community Bank and Trust has an experienced team of home loan professionals ready to put their services to work for you. We've been recognized statewide multiple times as a champion of affordable housing for mortgage lending. Therefore, we believe we are the best place to get a mortgage. Stop into your local branch or visit dakotacommunitybank.com to find out what their mortgage team can do for you. That's dakotacommunitybank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. If you're looking for bulls for the rancher, cattleman, and cowboy alike, you need to be at Stockman's Livestock for the Schrieffer Red Angus production sale. Join me at 1 p.m. March 12th at Stockman's Livestock as a family operation for over 30 years sells 25 two-year-old Red Angus bulls and 35 commercial open heifers. You can find videos and more information on their website at schrieferredangus.com. Come on in to Stockman's Livestock Thursday, March 12th, 1 p.m. Mountain Time for the Schrieffer Red Angus annual production sale. Hi, this is Andy Murnock with Pfeiffer's Auctioneers inviting you to any one of these exceptional upcoming farm retirement equipment auctions featuring late model John Deere R-Series four-wheel drive and track tractors, a 2019 DB60 corn planter, and more in Starbuck, Minnesota on March 12th. Then on March 21st and March 26th, Pfeiffer's will be offering an entire fleet of late model Case IH sprayers, quad tracks, 9230 combines, a Clause 750 combine, Challenger Series tractors, trucks, trailers, and more near Richardson in New England, North Dakota. For online bidding and complete details, log on to Pfeiffer's Uh, I realize some of those are uh, last week's ads. I got that. I know. But those great sales here. All right, stations coming back in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Welcome back and good morning. Dakota Prairie Outdoors Saturday edition continues here across the Dakota Territory and all across the world via YouTube Live. Yeah, I realize if you're listening to some of those ads, <laughs> I get it. A couple of those bull sales are done and over with, and what a great week I've had. Uh, DK Red Angus up in Williston, a great sale. The Kiefler family, thank you guys so much for having me up that way. Schrieffer family here on Thursday in Dickinson, uh, just a phenomenal Red Angus sale, I'm telling you. It was outrageously great. So uh, congratulations to uh, Mark and Riley and the family there, too. And uh, coming up, I have uh, (laughs) thanks, Daryl East, for texting me and reminding me those are out of date. I appreciate that. And I need to talk to you anyway. Uh, Coming up here this week, uh, next weekend, March 21st, I have the North Dakota Fur Takers Fur Auction. Part two is coming up here is we're going to be at the Burley County 4-H Center. And uh, after the first one that we had in January, I mean, it was a barn burner. So hopefully we have the same thing going on. Hopefully the fur price continues the way it is. Hopefully it's not canceled because like everything else, this COVID-19 thing. Uh, the Whites and uh, and Lee, a joint production bull sale coming up Saturday, March 21st in Bowman at the Bowman Auction Market. I'll be uh, there as well. Well, I can't be there. I'll be at the uh, fur sale. That's right. But coming up April 24, 4th. Uh, the Medicine Rocks Angus Ranch, also Bowman Auction Market. Uh, to another couple of great bull sales. If you're looking for Angus bulls, Black Angus that is, uh, that's where you need to be. So there you go. <laughs> I need a producer? I don't think so, Daryl. Nobody wants to come out this far into the ranch here side of things, I'll tell you. Uh, welcome back to the program. We have out of Cerberus Security, we have uh, Cord, we have Edward Dick out of Dickinson, Representative Luke Simons, and on the text messaging, Daryl Lee, thank you for uh, texting. How uh, you See, I know all you guys probably know Daryl. He could come out to the ranch, not only help me move cows, but he could have stayed over 
and uh, and Ben, my producer, possibly that way here. But we'll see how that goes. Say, so, Representative Simons, question for you quick. Are you ready for this one? I hope so. It came in uh, via my text message here. A lot. OK, so we we're talking about uh, Biden. Uh, let's see here. Where was it? Uh, Joe Biden talking to one of the union workers about taking away his guns, right? I mean, the, and he called it what an AR-14, I believe it was. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, pre don I think in, in my mind, most unions usually tend to vote on the Democratic side, don't they? I mean, isn't this kind of a slap in the union's face when he would say something like this? Well, typically, yes, but um, <clears throat> we've seen a little bit of a turn here uh, in North Dakota, well, and good. most, yeah, people are starting. Well, let's let's face it. Let's let's face what's really happening here. Um, the Democrat Party is the new Socialist Party. The Republican Party is being taken over by Democrats, and the Republican Party that we used to grow up thinking we were. Um, there's just a small percentage of us that are actually voting like that. And, um, that, that's the facts. I mean, that's, that's the facts. Our party has been infiltrated. The Democrat party has been infiltrated. I mean, um, North Dakota, I mean, Bernie Sanders won North Dakota. Um, most of the Democrats that I know are JFK Democrats, which right, actually, right. I hate to say this, but they're, <laughs> pretty darn good people i mean i think they can actually go to heaven and uh i'm just kidding i'm joking but the old school democrats are are good people they're fiscally conservative they're they're just some good people if jfk was alive today heck i don't know if the republicans would let him on the the ballot he's so conservative um (laughs) in a lot of different areas but um you know that's that's where where we're at yeah, and uh, Cord, I want to know, could you explain to me what an AR-14 is? <laughs> I have no idea on that, but I think it's supposed to shoot some, like, 60-millimeter rounds, a uh, 1,000 rounds per second, uh, and have a 100-round clip magazine, uh, is from what Biden described, is somewhere around there. But it just makes me cringe every time on different things here on talking about this with assault weapons bans and stuff like that. People don't understand that assault weapons are already <laughs> banned because an assault weapon is a select fire weapon, which has already been restricted since 1986 with the National Firearms Act. So it's the verbiage of this stuff with uh, a lot of the legislators trying to make rulings on things that they aren't educated in and they aren't trying to get the proper education to write a good bill on something that's already explicitly banned. You know, they call them assault weapons, which, you know, people like you and I, everybody that I'm probably preaching to the choir, a lot of people on the radio show right now, but uh, most people that I've seen, uh, especially I got a couple of friends that, use modern sporting rifles all the time and that's what they're trying to focus on their tv shows is modern sporting rifles is that the right way to go with it cord uh, you know calling them modern sporting rifles instead of uh ars or whatever they might call them that's a good verbiage on that uh i'm not really picking a certain thing i'm just anti calling them an assault rifle because that's an improper term. Assault is an act right. that a person can go to prison for. And the assault rifle is an actual terminology used for a automatic weapon, which automatic weapons are banned and controlled based off of the National Firearms Act. And so an assault rifle is a select fire weapon. So when they're saying that putting a vertical grip <laughs> or anything that's, you know, militarize they use in that term and that's improper i mean it's just terminology that they're trying to use to hype up things to scare you and it's just improper so the sporting you know modern sporting rifle is a very good alternative it's just avoid assault weapons at all terms because those are not legal for normal purchase well let's go to the phone lines here we're going to go to a 220 number here welcome to the program you're on with uh the rest of the crew here on Dakota Prairie Outdoors. What's your first name? Hey, Scott. Morning, this is Jamie. Jamie. Morning to the rest of you guys there. You bet. What's on How your you mind? How you doing, buddy? Well, it's been a while since you called in, that's for sure. Wait. Yeah, usually when I, I've been coyote hunting most of the time Saturday mornings when your show is on. So not that I've been very successful at it, but that's what I've been doing. But 
<laughs> I, I, aver uh, I averaged almost $85 a coyote when I sold my coyotes, man. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. What's on your mind? You got the, you okay. got the crew. I got, great. I got a couple things. First thing, uh, I did actually submit a draft from Governors of America to the Burley County Commissioners for a Second Amendment sanctuary. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Bittner forwarded, you know, he, I sent it to him and he's, you know, he said, forwarded it to the state's, Burley County State's Attorney. And uh, she had a bunch of mumbo jumbo. He sent me the email pretty much saying it's not going to happen, you know who's to determine what's unconstitutional and blah, blah, blah. And it sounded like the sheriff of Burley County wasn't going to be on board with it. So I think a couple other people submitted drafts as well. I don't know if it was the same one as mine, but I don't know. I haven't heard nothing. So I don't, it's probably not going to happen here. Right. And uh, <clears throat> just talking about Joe Biden there. I mean, how big of a phony is this guy? First of all, he tells the guy he's full of S when he said he wants to, re, you know, restrict Second Amendment rights. And then moments later, he said he's going to, yeah, we're coming, we're going to come and take your, yeah, like you said, AR-14s. So, I mean, so, what, AR, ARs aren't a, aren't a firearm now? That's not a, you know, I mean, he just dealt with, talked out of both sides of his mouth. It blows my mind. And these Democrats are cheering. I'm like, see, we finally got somebody who's straight talking. He's going to give them hell. And I'm just like... You know, are you, are you guys that incompetent that you can't see he's a total liar? He just, he just, uh, you know, contradicted himself. And that's one thing I, that, you know, with everything that's being recorded in social media, you, you can't hide from what you say anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, there hasn't been a piece of gun control legislation under his beak that he hasn't wanted to sign anyways, or did sign, you know, he's up there bragging how he kicked the NRA's rear end. And I was the first one who bound you know, these AR-15s and 30 clip assault magazines or whatever the hell he tried to call them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully you can get something uh, going on your Burley County thing, though. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with that. You know, I mean, they pretty much told me to pound sound on that. So, I don't know. Hopefully somebody else comes up with something. But, you know, what What are you doing? They're not going to play ball with you. I guess hopefully Representative Simons come up with something there in the legislature. You bet. Well, Jamie, we're up against the bottom break here. I'm going to have to let you run so we can uh, continue. Yep. We're going to talk red flag the second half so you can call back in, okay? Yeah, I might, actually. <laughs> Do that. All right. Thanks for calling right. in, Jamie. Right, Appreciate Daddy. it. You bet. Bye. 888 dakota That's 888-932-5682 is the phone number. We're going to come back more in the second half of the program, continuing and talking. We're going to bring up red flag laws because North and South Dakota both have uh, been working on these, and there's a lot of people that want them out there. So we're going to talk about that and get your opinion on that as well. We'll be back. Dakota Prairie Outdoors right after these messages. From big loans to small personal loans, you can bring your dreams into focus with Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We make getting a business or a personal loan so simple, you'll want to work with us time and time again. With competitive rates, we offer personal, ag, farm, business and commercial loans, home loans, and more. Stop into your local Dakota Community Bank and Trust for a quality hometown community banking experience we pride ourselves in. Equal housing lender and member FDIC. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. The DK Red Angus production sale is coming to town on Saturday, March 7th at 2 p.m. Central Time, Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Offering 57 purebred Red Angus bulls, two Red Angus Charlotte composite bulls, five Red Angus Simital composite bulls, 50 registered Red Angus yearling heifers, and 10 Red Angus commercial yearling heifers. With over 27 years in the Red Angus business and in the seed stock business for over 40 years, you can trust the Kiefler family. Join us on Saturday, March 7th, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Hi, this is Andy Murdoch with Piper's Auctioneers inviting you to any one of these exceptional upcoming farm retirement equipment auctions featuring late model John Deere R-Series four-wheel drive and track tractors, a 2019 DB60 corn planter, and more in Starbuck, Minnesota on March 12th. Then on March 21st and March 26th, Piper's will be offering an entire fleet of late model Case IH sprayers, quad tracks, 9230 combines, a Clause 750 combine, Challenger Series tractors, trucks, trailers, and more near Richardson in New England, North Dakota. For online bidding and complete details, log on to Pfeiffer's. 
cattle producers, it's time for the Schrieffer Red Angus production sale. Thursday, March 12th, 1 p.m. Stockman's Livestock, Dickinson, North Dakota. Selling 25 two-year-old bulls and 35 commercial open heifers. Videos and information can be found online at SchrieferRedAngus.com. Docile dispositions and bulls anybody can use. Make sure you attend the Schrieffer Red Angus annual production sale. Thursday, March 12th, 1 p.m. at Stockman's Livestock, Dickinson, North Dakota. We want amazing innovations to drive progress for generations. We want jobs and careers for generations. We want American energy production that protects our land and the wildlife for generations. Today, the advanced technologies deployed by the North Dakota oil and gas producers are making that happen. And with the promise of emerging technologies, the energy of North Dakota has a very bright future for generations to come. This message is brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Council. To learn more, visit energyofnorthdakota.com. Hey folks, join me on Saturday. Saturday, March 7th, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota, for the DK Red Angus production sale. 57 purebred Red Angus bulls offering sons of Rolling Deep 660, Thunder 637, Bieber, CL Atomic, and Top Notch 15, and many more. All bulls carcass ultrasounded and free delivery up to 500 miles. More information at DKRedAngus.net. Join the Kiefler family on Saturday, March 7th, 2 p.m. Central Time, Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Looking for a home loan? Dakota Community Bank and Trust has an experienced team of home loan professionals ready to put their services to work for you. We've been recognized statewide multiple times as a champion of affordable housing for mortgage lending. Therefore, we believe we are the best place to get a mortgage. Stop into your local branch or visit dakotacommunitybank.com to find out what their mortgage team can do for you. That's dakotacommunitybank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. If you're looking for bulls for the rancher, cattleman, and cowboy alike, you need to be at Stockman's Livestock for the Schrieffer Red Angus production sale. Join me at 1 p.m. March 12th at Stockman's Livestock as a family operation for over 30 years sells 25 two-year-old Red Angus bulls and 35 commercial open heifers. You can find videos and more information on their website at SchrieferRedAngus.com. Come on in to Stockman's Livestock Thursday, March 12th, 1 p.m. Mountain Time for the Schrieffer Red Angus annual production sale. Hi, this is Andy Murdoch with Pfeiffer's Auctioneers inviting you to any one of these exceptional upcoming farm retirement equipment auctions featuring late model John Deere R-Series four-wheel drive and track tractors, a 2019 DB60 corn planter, and more in Starbuck, Minnesota on March 12th. Then on March 21st and March 26th, Pfeiffer's will be offering an entire fleet of late model Case IH sprayers, quad tracks, 9230 combines, a Clause 750 combine, Challenger Series tractors, trucks, trailers, and more near Richardson in New England, North Dakota. For online bidding and complete details, log on to Pfeiffer's dot com yeah we go <laughs> little benny paulson music here we got uh stations we're coming back 10 seconds 10 seconds Welcome back, everybody, to Dakota Prairie Outdoors on a windy, I don't know, in your neck of the woods, but <clears throat> here at the ranch, <laughs> it's its windy. It's cold. Yeah. <clears throat> Getting ready for a little bit of snow. A little Benny Paulson music in the background. Find them on iTunes. You can find them all over. I believe that. Yeah. Welcome to Dakota Prairie Outdoors, the only coronavirus-free radio program this morning here also coming up medicine rocks angus uh, sale coming up uh april 24th at the bowman auction market uh, those folks over in ecolac can raise some real nice bulls make sure you do that and coming up next weekend whites angus and lee angus joint production sale that's at the bowman auction market next saturday also join me in bismarck for the wild fur auction you bet part two at burley county 4-h center one o'clock central time and if you uh want to come in i mean it's 20 bucks if you are not a member, you want to come in and just see what the auction's all about, you can sure do that, too. Uh, you do need to be a member in order to be there. So it's a $20 a year membership fee. Bring your bring your coyotes. Bring any kind of fur you have. On today's program, we have a, a, a trifecta of knowledge here. Representative Luke Simons, we have Cord. He was out of Cerberus Security out of Dickinson. Also, Edward Dick out of uh, the uh, Dickinson area as well. Edward, let's talk a little bit. I want to make sure we have time to talk about the uh, what's happening April 7th uh, in your neck of the woods for those people listening on uh, KLTC up that way. Okay, April 7th, 1045, 
I put my name in to talk to the Stark County Board of Commissioners about confirming and absolutely making sure the world knows <clears throat> that we want to abide by our Second Amendment. Uh, it's just, I I didn't realize, uh, well, after, after Virginia blew up there, I just like, hey, we want to make sure that everyone knows that this county wants our Second Amendment. Absolutely, period. Has nothing to do with hunting at all. Nothing. Right. It is to preserve our right to bear arms against tyranny. And anytime your government says you don't need anything, just like Hitler did, you don't need anything to defend yourself, you definitely need something to defend yourself. <laughs> That's absolutely a fact there. I just got a text that says the mass panic, uh, you know, with this coronavirus concerning how easy oh people let the government start taking over complete control. And we've been seeing that uh, in sports and schools are closing up now and all that. So, yeah, uh, if the government says you uh, you don't need something, you better you better be careful and stock up on it, I think. But that's just yeah. my opinion. Indeed. <laughs> and you were. You mentioned red flag earlier. Yes, let's and talk. I had I had a very good conversation with Rich Warden today, okay. and he was very upset that when he signed on to something that happened last year, he was led to believe it was something very pro policemen, pro or pro cops to to defend the policemen. Well, he was told by some other rhinos, not other, but some rhinos that this was going to help the police. Well, when it got going, he realized what had happened and he backed off of it and it failed anyway. But yeah, he wanted to make sure that you know that he is very definitely pro second amendment. Okay. And he was very upset about the red flag. All right. So he was led to believe something different on that whole thing. And that you see that happening. Uh, Representative Simons, <laughs> tell me how the, how does this work in the legislature when bills are introduced and uh, do people read all the way through them or do they just, uh, you know, well, you tell me what it's about and then uh, I'll vote for it or against it. I mean, don't they read into that just like uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi or, yeah, trying to get uh, abortion money here in the uh, coronavirus bill? Aren't they reading yeah. this stuff through or what? So I've, I've done my own little statistics on it. And um, what I'll do is I'll usually on a, an important bill. I'll go to 20 different legislators once or twice a week, and I'll ask them on one bill if they had a chance to read it. <clears throat> and generally speaking, they didn't unless they sit on the committee. And even a lot of those people didn't read the bill. And then I'll, I'll have the whole bill highlighted, and then I'll just go over it with them really quick. Usually it takes me about three to four minutes of why I will vote yes or no on the bill. And I'll ask them, can I get, and they're, usually they're like, wow, well, that's horrible. That's a, that's really badly written. Yeah. Or this is, this is an, you know, and then I'll ask them, are you going to vote for it? And they'll be like, well, we'll wait to see what the rest of the people do in the, in the legislature because the board lights up. So people watch who's voting and how they're voting. That's how they're doing. It. And that's why I'm for a closed yeah. board. Yeah, think so the they're, follow, be, they're, they're following the masses when they're voting for things. Yeah, okay. and literally they're being they're paid to go down there and read these bills, and the bills aren't being read. 900 and some bills last year, <clears throat> 2019, and um, uh, what I do now is when people say I vote no too often, which is not true, I still voted yes more than I voted no, Um I always ask them, could you name me 10 bills out of the 900? Um, I start out with 20. They can't do that. I start out with 10. And then I say five bills that we couldn't have lived without. And um, no one can do it for me. Yeah. Not one. Um, name me five bills that we couldn't have lived without. And so I'm always thinking to myself, it's okay to vote. No, we have too many laws. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Well, let's talk about red flag gun laws. Now, uh, I'd like to bring South Dakota part of this because it seems like North and South Dakota, we work together. If what, one, one thing happens in one state, you usually see it coming up in the legislature in the next one somehow. Now, they voted the red flag law. Of course, they can't remember how they disguised the name of it. Again, I had that a couple of weeks ago, but 
it was uh, voted down in committee five to two, I believe was that. So there's still two people that thought it was a good idea. And just very shortly and quickly, red flag law means basically if somebody deems their family member, somebody else feels, uh, you know, they're, they're, um, I don't know, what'd you call it? A threat to themselves or society or something that you can make an, uh, make a call and the sheriff office will come out and seize their weapons until they try to prove themselves innocent on something. So, I mean, you're guilty before proven innocent. Is that kind of the gist of it there, uh, Luke, or not? I mean, it, it's kind of yeah. what it is, right? <clears throat> yeah, well, so the thing is, is you didn't need, so you completely, well, there's two things that are a problem with the North Dakota State Constitution, not to mention the United States Constitution. Um, the problem is, is if I accuse you of something, I can accuse you all day long, but you have the right to take it before a jury trial. This waives that fact, and a judge can just stamp off on it. So, right. so if you are under, um, uh, when you get out of prison, and um, um, and you get out of prison early, uh, what is it called when you're out of prison early? Um, uh, you sign a waiver. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've never had to do this, parole? so I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, what was that? Parole. parole? Parole. Thank you. you. When you're out on parole, when you're out on parole, you sign a waiver and that judge can throw you right back in jail because you're out on grace. That's what parole is. Well, if you're not convicted of anything and remember, it's against a lot of threaten. If I threaten Scott Bachmeyer's life, his wife, his children, his property, that's against the law already. Um, and, and yes, we can do things about that. Um, but if you suspect me of doing this, the judge does not have a right to come and seize my property, which would, in this case would be guns or weapons or, um, limit what I can and cannot do. It's just impossible. So this, this is unconstitutional, even on take the guns out of it. We have the right to a fair trial. You cannot accuse somebody without a fair trial yeah. period. And that's exactly what this law did. Not yeah. to, I mean, there's other things of entities of it too, that are wrong, but this is the main focus for me. And I was on that committee. We killed that Rick Becker and I, and Jeff Magrum, uh, and my chairman really put the stomp down on that bill in committee and judiciary. So who's bringing these in? I mean, South Dakota, North Dakota, who are bringing these, red flag laws who's who's bringing this to the table to begin with they're liberal think tank groups is what they are um representative carla hansen um and oh uh, uh, i forgot her the other lady's name on judiciary um ruth buffalo um representative ruth buffalo uh they were the two on on this one that we're really promoting it. Representative Hansen brought it to the uh, Capitol herself, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, something else in the cord on that, on the red flag law side of things. It's so easy sometimes to say, well, you, you can look at one. And I had this conversation with a, 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 a I want to say young lady, but anyway, she was older than I was. But anyway, this lady said, what would be the problem? If you know somebody has some mental issues that you're helping protect that family and uh, it, it, I don't know if uh, what's a good answer to that court. How would you come across that and talking to that lady? Easy due process. Yeah. If you're having problems with stuff like that, I mean, it used to be where neighbors and family members would talk to each other. And so you don't just leave someone high and dry. Yeah. If uh, you feel someone's mentally unstable and is uh, having problems of that nature, you talk to them. You don't just go running and have their property seized. That isn't going to make anything better. It's going to make things worse. And uh, I kind of want to circle back a little bit here to something Edward Dick was talking about here. Sure. Sure. He said that, uh, oh, Senator Rich Wardner, he was uh, Senate Majority Leader. He co-sponsored the red flag bill that failed in North Dakota here. Uh Ed Dick said he came and apologized to him and that uh, there was problems with it. I think the best way for him, being as he is a Stark County resident, is to show up here and show support 
for us making Stark County his county, a preservation county, and then he can take that verbiage and he can move it into the state as well. So we don't have this issue ever again. Right. And I encourage the people that are listening to talk to him, to encourage him to show up and show this, that yes, he got made a mistake in supporting this. He was fooled by some people with wrong talking points. Now is the time where he could stand up and make this right to the people. Right. You bet. Uh, Ed, uh, what do you, on the red flag side of things, have you been uh, talking to uh, uh, Rich Wardner about, uh, is this going to come up again, do you think? I mean, it's possibly, isn't it? Yes, it, it's going to come up. In fact, uh, it, it's just something that, uh, well, in Florida, one county has had over 3,500 uh, red flags. I mean, just absolutely go out. And I guess over 900 of those were just like out of the blue. A phone call was made and the people lost their property. Right. So, and the county next to it had won. And they didn't really want to pursue that because it wasn't, wasn't up to mm-hmm. snuff, but they had to pursue it. So you've got one county doing 3,500 and the next one over, you know, a boundary of an imaginary line on a map makes this other county different. No, if somebody wants power, that's all that is. Just it's, gun control is not about anything about guns. It means the control of the people that they can't defend themselves against tyranny. Period. Has nothing to do with hunting. So red flags are a way to control. Period. You know, when you look at the red flag, well, and you go county by county. If you look at it on the county side of things, you know, like. Uh, I live in Slope County. I know the, my county sheriff very well. I mean, uh, I would come to believe that he wouldn't <laughs> want want to see red flag laws at all. I think Bowman County, go down into South Dakota, my friends down in Harding County and uh, Perkins and Corson County, I don't believe would, would see that. But if you get towards the eastern side where there's more population, I believe that there would be more support for something like this. I mean, is it county by county like that? Or is it, uh, I mean, do we have to go county by county to make sure that we uh, protect our rights this way instead of doing it on the state level? Uh, let uh, Luke take that question. I guess I'm trying to put together what you were saying. Well, do we do uh, we go I, at it on a state level or do we go on it like we're trying to do here on a county by county level for you know, a, a second amendment yeah. sanctuary yeah. county, or uh, can we do something on a state level to say the whole state of North Dakota and state of South Dakota for that matter would be blanketed under the, the two way sanctuary. Well, one thing that, that I found out is legislators don't care about previous laws that they've made. No. So they just <laughs> do whatever they want to do. So it really comes down, you know, Scott, you have cattle, I have cattle. Yeah. Andrew, you grew around cattle. Uh, Ed, I'm not sure if you had cattle or not, but you always have that one grandma cow that, that's watching five, six, eight calves. Oh, yeah. She'll be sitting on that one side of the hill, and she's a protective mama, and the rest of the cows leave her with them. That's exactly the way it is when it comes to local government. No one can protect your local government like you can, and you need that one grandma watch cow, that one guard dog. In your, everyone knows him. That's politically challenged. You know, he's he's or he or she in their town, their city, their county. That is really on to things, and it really comes down to local control. And I I do have some stuff up the stovepipe that I'm hiding that I'm going to uh, bring back in in 2021 um, in light of this. But the truth is, is we are re-ratifying things that are in the Constitution. The Constitution is the ultimate supreme law of the land. Century code is just suggestion, basically. Yeah. There is only one supreme law of the land, and that is the Constitution of the United States and the state. Our state Constitution is strong. I would encourage everyone to read it. Um, but saying that, when we made constitutional carry, which is simply that you can carry a gun without uh, being harassed by anybody. You do have to have a a North Dakota driver's license, a valid North Dakota driver's license, which I didn't like that part. I don't think you should have to produce papers to have a constitutional right. Um, But saying that, 
it's already in the Constitution. So we had to re-ratify in Century Code the Constitution. Do you, Scott, are you following me? Like, I hear this you. is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. This is absurd. Now that we have to make Century Code that says that this right that we hold to be evident um, is okay in North Dakota. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. And so I say, let your counties, your cities, they need to become havens of the people's rights. And that way, when legislators are voting, they're going, hey, my people are speaking, and they're speaking very loud. Uh, most legislators, when they've been there a long time, I don't know that they think that they work for the people anymore. I really don't believe that. It's like they think they're smarter than the people they work for. And it, it really bothers me. It really, really bothers me. Um, this is a way for the people to speak up and the legislators have to listen. It pulls them back in the line. The oh. thing I made, said just made sense. It does. And, and, you know, another thing, too, you know, property rights, that's a whole nother uh, basket of eggs that we can talk about. But hopefully that gets brought up again, too. But we're up against the clock, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys. Cord, I have one last question for you here in 30 seconds. I hope you can answer it. Are you ready? Yes. Was that it? No. Where where <laughs> where am I sitting at with my suppressor? Where am I sitting at? My suppressor, my second one. Where am I at here? Well, I'm starting to get them trickling in. Uh, usually we're looking at six months to a year long wait with a 10 month average. However, my record is two months for getting stuff back. So I really don't know. Talk to the feds on that one. <laughs> okay. All That's right. one that we should make the suppressors a piece of safety equipment because yes. it's just like a muffler on the car and legalize them. I agree 100%. Gentlemen, all three of you guys, thank you so much for coming on the program. Have yourselves a great weekend. Stay warm, okay? Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. You bet. All right. Uh, tell you what, coming up here, make sure you join me at March 21st at the uh, Burley County 4 H Center for the second fur auction, statewide fur auction. That'll be a good time. One o'clock central time. Medicine Rocks Angus Ranch, their production sale coming up April 24th at Bowman Auction Market, Bowman, North Dakota. Sale at one mountain time. You can uh, come in for a free lunch before that at noon, too. It's good stuff. And also coming up next weekend, the White Angus and Lee Angus joint production sale. That is going to be at the Bowman Auction Market as well here. And that'll be a 1 o'clock Mountain Time sale. 70 Angus Bowls, 35 Heifers. That'll be next Saturday already. If you have items of interest you'd like to advertise with myself, get in touch with me. Email is scott at ndsupernet.com. You can also find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. All that good stuff. So make sure you uh, find me somewhere here. Enjoy. Also, uh, you can find... Uh, my YouTube channel, Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio. You can also find my daily show at dakotaprairieoutdoors.com. Have yourself a great weekend. Enjoy. All right. Thanks, stations. YouTube, you guys uh, appreciate all the uh, comments over here on the sidebar. Thank you. And uh, keep subscribing. I appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. Thank you.